Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So let's go ahead and get on with this hallway. There are many dolls that are due to check into the rooming house for New Year's Eve. So let me get this area in order so they'll be able to enter safely. So I created beadboard for the walls of this hallway entrance. Now, if you've never seen me make beadboard on a paper bag template, I will leave a link in the description to that video. So I created two templates to fit the, each side of the wall and covered them with the coffee stir sticks to create my beadboard. The template method makes creating beadboard very convenient, especially when you consider trying to stick each stick to the wall. Now here's the wallpaper I chose for the upper portion of the hallway. It's that antique looking rose color that I actually used in the seamstress's room above the dining room. I really do like that. I did do my beadboard a little bit high because this is an area that's going to get a lot of traffic. Now I do want to show you dolls what the walls look like prior to the wallpaper. At one point in effort to smooth out the really rugged walls, I did what I call the skim coat. I did sand it down. But it's an old rooming house dolls, so the walls may be a little bit lumpy. Now this is how I apply my wallpaper paste. It's actually just tacky glue and I apply it to a piece of cardboard or chipboard and just smear it onto the wall where I want the glue to be. And that really makes installation really easy. You cover the wall completely and then gently lay your wallpaper and smooth it down. Now dolls, keep in mind this is paper is rather inexpensive, so it doesn't have a coat on it where I can do a lot of touching and smoothing. My main objective is to position it straight on the wall in the right direction. And now allow it to dry. I really love how aged and distressed the beadboard looks. And I did do a little dry fitting along the walls to make sure that the beadboard was going to fit the way I wanted it to around the door frame and ending where I needed it to end where the other room begins. I also want you to take note that I will be allowing the beadboard to wrap around the edge of the side of the walls. So I realized I hadn't aged the doorknobs for the double doors. So I did have some from a set that I bought earlier. So I need two doorknobs to go on each side of the door, but they're looking way too shiny and way too new and brassy. So I'm using my rubbing buff to tone it down with some antique gold. And I'm using a really small detail brush to apply it. Now dolls, after the rubbing buff was dry, in order to add a more detailed and antique vintage look, I added a solution of black acrylic paint and alcohol wash and it actually is going to really bring out the details around the doorknob and the keyhole and darken in those um, really intricate portions of it and then I actually painted the doorknob solid black to add a little bit more dimension and definition to the doorknob and the key plate I think it adds a lot of character and makes it look a lot more vintage and weathered now that the wallpaper is dry and looking good, let's go ahead and add that beadboard. And as I mentioned, I'm wrapping it around the edge. And that's to suggest that the hallway opens up into a corridor that leads to the dining room. There will be a staircase along that corridor as well, but that'll be a later video. So I did use Gorilla Wood Glue on the back of the beadboard template. And I put a really thin coat all the way down. I didn't show it here, but I coated it with a thin coat of the Gorilla Wood glue. And now I'm pressing it onto the wall and wrapping it around that edge. Now I did make it a little bit short, so I will have to make up for those couple missing pieces to cover that end. But it's going all the way to where the floor stops and where the opening wall to the music room begins. Now, now that my beadboard is up and drying, I just want to bring your attention to the tops of the beadboard where I cut it and where there's a little bit of what I call raw edge that didn't get stained. And I will be adding more stain to that before I actually seal everything in. 
I do again love the distressing that I put on the beadboard and I really like the way things look. There's a little gap around the door that I'm have to work on and I'm have to make sure that the wallpaper goes around to the edges as well to create the illusion of the hallway. Now here I'm just showing you that edge where I had to add the extra panels for the beadboard to cover the end of the wall. Now to help out my inexpensive paper to make it easy to add mini wax or mini hold to the wall for pictures and mirrors, I add a thin coat of Mod Podge, usually in the mat or in the satin, to just seal the paper in to just protect it while you're decorating. Now here are my doors, all complete. The doorknobs have been glued to both sides. And here I am adding a little stain to the top of that beadboard to make sure that those areas just below the chair rail are stained and blending into the rest of the overall look of the beadboard. Now this is something you have to be really careful with dolls. Don't have too much stain on your brush. Don't allow it to drip onto your floor because if it drips and stains it really could damage your floor. So if you ever have to use this particular technique be very cautious and use very sparing amounts of the stain so that it doesn't drip and stain or get onto your wallpaper or onto your floor. This actually may not be considered a best practice, but it's what I do to house. I definitely think that beadboard looks much better now that I've done it. So let's go ahead and pull this room together. So now that the beadboard is dry, I've glued in the door and I've actually added the brick in the window to the end of the hall that separates the hallway from the music room. I'm really tickled about how this project turned out. It actually turned out better than I imagined. Sometimes dolls, when you hit hiccups or challenges, you just have to persevere. And in the end, you end up with something wonderful. Let me go ahead and pull this room together because I have dolls waiting to check in for New Year's Eve. And here we are. The hallway's got the pictures, the chandelier, and lots of trunks and luggage and bags and umbrellas. These are all the things that were brought in by the visitors who came to stay in the rooming house for New Year's Eve. I can't wait to share with you dolls what's going on in the rooming house with the dolls. But I have to stop and take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of you. This has been a wonderful first year for Little Gretchen's Workshop. Yes, this is my anniversary of the launch of this channel, January 1st, 2022. And it has been a wonderful year. And you dolls have made it even better. I can hardly believe that it's almost 2,000 of you all now. So I've got some ideas about how we're going to celebrate 2,000 subscribers. So I hope you dolls had a wonderful Christmas season and I want to say Happy New Year, Happy 2023 to all of my wonderful dolls. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.